Pine Nuts, this is Mr. Ma, and we have uh, Mr. Greenlee over here. And we decided to get you guys out of the classroom today and uh, see if we can make a podcast and uh, put together some thoughts about this midpoint slope and Pythagoras that we've been working on in the classroom. So stay tuned. Looks like Mr. Greenlee is here is in the process of making a right triangle, which certainly will help us if we're going to be using Pythagoras. And uh, so, hey, welcome to the outdoors. Welcome to class. We're going to try it. And uh, extra credit if you can identify where we are today. You're on. All right, so right up here, we have the top of the hill, okay? And what we want to find out, because we're going to take a little walk, is we want to find out the distance going down the ridge line. So it should be somewhere down over here. Yep, okay. right there, right there. All right, so we want to find that that distance going down that slope and we've learned about it in class how to find that part of the right triangle and of course we call it what you guys yeah I think I heard you say hypotenuse right we hope so, so we have our right triangle and if we know the legs going straight up and down which is your y-axis and we know your other leg is going horizontally okay that's your x-axis then we should be able to find that slope which is angled so now we'll show you a little picture in the ground that we uh, sketched out all right so this picture here is to illustrate the mountain that mr. Greeny was just talking about and if you look at the the base of it which is also your x-axis we're gonna approximate that it's about a thousand feet long and so hopefully you can see that in the dirt there and then our y-axis, we're going to approximate that the height of that hill is about 800 feet tall. And so once again, we want to find the distance of that hypotenuse. And so that's your first job in part one of the series today that we're going to be working on. Anything else you want to add? Well, and so what we can do is pretend this is a grid. Over here, this is our origin. We know that zero, zero. So we're zipping all the way over here. So this would be 1,000, zero. If you're going to use the distance formula, you need to know the x and y coordinate then this point right up here would obviously be a thousand for the X and then 800 for the Y. So even though they're big numbers, we'll, you'll still, you can use a calculator and when you do that formula, if that's what you choose, you can use, um, calculate to do it. But if not, we can use the Pythagorean theorem because remember we said this is your C, which is your hypotenuse. Okay. So you got a few minutes to work on that. Shouldn't take you very long. Good luck. And when you're done that, we'll go to part two. All right, welcome to part two. I just had to show you my dog here. Here's Jet. He's out having a great day in the sunshine and uh, enjoying life. I hope you guys had a chance to get out and enjoy your uh, uh, Veterans Day today. So, anyways, Mr. Greenlee, we have part two coming on, and so we got our uh, ground chalkboard here. You want to give a quick synopsis what the project or the okay. problem is now? So this time we're going to find the midpoint. We want to go up the hill, but I'm not as good a shape as Mr. Mock because he runs 20 miles every day. <laughs> All right, got a marathon coming up. So I just got done golfing, and I we take a cart, Mr. Butler and I. Good score? Yep, pretty good. All right. All right, so midpoint. We already know the distance because you guys just figured it out using either the distance formula or you used the Pythagorean theorem, and we'll talk about um, what it was at the end. Now we want to find that midpoint, somewhere in the middle. And so we again... Use the formula, hopefully you remember it. X plus X divided by two gives you the X coordinate, and Y plus Y divided by two gives you the Y coordinate. Don't worry about the big numbers. You guys are in eighth grade, so you can deal with those, and if you uh, need to use a calculator, it's fine. So again, remember, here is your origin. What's that point? Okay, zero, zero. We already talked about this point. If you can't remember, rewind the video. Okay? And So, now, so that's gonna give them two different ordered pairs then. Correct. And that, of course, cool. is what you need for the formula. Now, after you figure out the midpoint, we also want to know this distance halfway up. We'll call it X. Mr. Green and okay. I want to take a break at halfway. We want you guys to tell us how far we have to go before we get our break, okay? And hopefully you can remember that some from previous learning. Just remember, you should already know this distance. If you need help, make sure you ask. Okay. So, part two, we want you to find the midpoint, not only the location of x and y we also want that distance so we know the distance we have to actually walk today for, to get up there 
All right, good luck. Shouldn't take you very long. We'll see you part three in a minute. Okay, I'm not sure if we can see here, but uh, we just had a discussion with Mr. Greenley here, and we decided, you know what, that mountain is a little steeper than we want to go today. We've already, he's already gone golfing, and I've already got my miles in today, but we want to go ride a quad. And so, Mr. Greenley and I talked, we've been riding quads before in the past, and we figured that a quad won't go up a slope any steeper than, what do we say, three-fourths, Mr. Greenley? Four, you know, is it three-fourths? Three Up three over four, three-fourths slope. And so we're going to introduce the problem now, slope, and you got to determine if we can go get a quad and if we can get up that hill. So let's go to Mr. Greenlee, and he'll give you the problem now. Okay, and one thing to remember, if you've ever driven up like to Sacramento, they have, the, they have signs that give the grade, the percentage of grade. They do that for the truckers because truckers have to know which gear to be in as you come down the grade so that they can stop or slow down enough and not burn out their brakes. Now that's a little different problem. So if you want some extra credit, come up... Um, find it out on the internet, call the um, motor vehicles department um, and see if you can figure out how they figure out grade of a you know a highway going up a mountain. But for our for our work, since we're only in eighth grade, we again know that here's our grid. Again we know this is zero zero. We already talked about how this is over one thousand and not up anything so that point is thousand zero. We know this point was over a thousand and up eight hundred. So again, just to go back to the big numbers, don't worry about them. If you write them down into the formulas and use your calculator, it should still come out okay. So, slope, we remember, is a formula. Rise over run, okay, the rate of change, okay, how far up, how far over, like going up steps. So use your formula for slope to figure out this right here to see if we can ride our quads up. If you can't remember the slope formula, look it up, okay? So we'll give you a couple more minutes to figure out that slope, and hopefully it's uh, not as hot, not as much as uh, what? What do we say? Three, three four, up three and three. over four. So that's your job. Once you find that slope there, you need to be able to tell us if we have a steeper slope than three fourths, or if it's less than three fourths, so we don't flip those things over backwards. I uh, live in Alaska. I can't tell you guys how many times we got uh, <laughs> kids your age, man, riding their slopes up hills like this and uh, they flip over on them and they break their spine and they end up uh, paralyzed for life. So Mr. Green and I enjoy life, we don't want to be paralyzed, so you have to be able to find the slope and tell us if it's less than or greater than three-fourths. Good luck. Part four is coming at you pretty quick here. All right. All right. So, so far we figured out according to our calculations that here we have our hill. We know the distance. We figured out the midpoint, part two, using the formula. We figured out the slope. Hopefully we can drive because I'm gonna get really tired walking up there and I make it to school. All right, there we go. Jet knows it's slope, okay? And now we actually want you to figure out the quarter point. So you can see that, okay? Because you never know, I might only be able to make it up a quarter of that mountain before we have to stop. We so need a water of, break. Think of what, what else um, you've learned in this lesson to try to, to, um, to use so you can figure out quarter point. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Midpoint, quarter point. Maybe there's something there that um, will allow you to find the a quarter of the way up. Okay, so again, if this was our midpoint... Okay, a quarter of the way up would be somewhere in here, okay? And then we'd have another quarter point even above the midpoint, wouldn't we? And that would obviously be what? So we'll let you figure that out. So all we're doing is we're thinking of fractions here. We've taken a whole, this whole piece, and we just want to divide it into quarters. So we want quarter breaks walking up that hill so we can get some water and enjoy the view and check it out. So once again, you guys got to find the distance that quarter point is from the base of that hill, and also the 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 ordered pairs would represent that location. So good luck with that. That's your last part of the series. We get Jet out of the way. So good luck, and we'll see you in class tomorrow. And now for the last part. We've done a little work, 
looking at the mountain, looking at the uh, ground and getting an idea of how to do distance and midpoint and slope and even quarter point. Now what we want you to do is take the grid uh, picture that you have here and find out again the distance along the slope, find the midpoint of the slope, and then find the slope itself using the grid because we just estimated the distance when we uh, had that diagram on the ground but the grid gives us a little better ratio of how long the mountain is along the bottom to how high it is and then of course to the slope so let's say that each of the units on the grid are 100 feet so to give you a little hint Count the number of grid spaces along the bottom, multiply by 100, and of course that would be the distance. And then this will give you an idea of how to figure out the height of the mountain, and then that, that of course will allow you to um, find the points, which then will allow you to use your formulas to find those um, distances, uh, midpoints and slope and see if that works for you.